Well, I am back at Alder Lake in New York. Um, I did a video here almost exactly one year ago um, when I came up here with my canoe, uh, but the lake was still frozen. So I ended up just hiking and camping out for that trip. Um, but as you can probably see, it is not frozen this year. So I am gonna spend the day canoeing, fishing, and then uh, camp out on the other side of the lake. So uh, let's get started and let's get in the canoe. My first plan for today is to uh, go out and try to find that last campsite that I was at last year. And I kind of remember there was a stream that empties out into this lake. Um, so I'm just looking for that stream. I know generally where it was, but not exactly. And uh, once I find that campsite, I'm gonna go ahead and just get camp all set up. And that way I kind of have my base camp ready to go. Uh, there's a possibility for rain today, so if it does start raining, I'll be able to just go back to the campsite and get in the tent if I need to. So I'm gonna find this campsite. We will uh, set up camp, grab some food, and then uh, the plan is just to get back on the lake and fish for the rest of the day, hopefully. Hopefully get lucky and actually catch something. But at least the lake is not frozen. So we're doing better than last year. There is the stream coming into the lake. So I know my campsite is right around here. I'm gonna hop out of the canoe and uh, try and find it. I found the campsite. Uh, this one's really great because it's pretty much right on the water so I'm able to just pull the canoe up and uh, be right at camp. Some of the other campsites at Alder Lake, they're all, I mean they're all really close to the water but uh, you gotta walk across the trail and onto the other side if that makes sense. So this one's just right up on the water and the trail doesn't cross in between or go through the campsite. So I will get all set up here and get the tent going and uh, like I said, grab some food. Not exactly sure what they were trying to achieve here with this uh, double fire pit they've got going. I don't think this was here last time. Um, there was just this one larger fire pit and someone's added all of this. I don't know really, not really sure what for, um, but we'll make it work for tonight and uh, should be fine. Maybe clean up the campsite a little bit. There's a lot of trash and stuff laying around. So that is home for tonight. You can see I've got uh, the rocks at all the stakes just because the ground is really uh, tough and it's hard to get the stakes in there all the way. But this is the Six Moon Designs Gatewood Cape and I've got plenty of room in there. Hopefully that gives you an idea for size. So my head does hit right about there, but laying down, it's more than enough room. Got the sleeping bag and pillow and sleeping pad and everything in there and ready to go. And I uh, took a few minutes to just clean up the fire pit a little bit and get it ready for later on tonight. And uh, yeah. The campsite's all good, and I am going to uh, get some water from the stream, and then I will head back out onto the lake. Looks like I see quite a few people fishing along the edge of the lake, um, which is alright, but when I got here, I was the only one out here on the lake, so I guess everyone just showed up a little bit later.
Well, no luck fishing this morning. I uh, had a couple bites and I had one trout that I almost had pulled into the canoe, but he spit it out and got away. So, at least I know they're out there at this point. Um, I am going to stop here for a little bit and uh, go back to the campsite and eat some food, eat lunch, and then uh, head out and keep fishing and film a little of the fishing. So, just uh, pulled the canoe in here into my kind of like a little parking spot and uh, yeah gonna take a break For lunch today we are having peanuts and coffee. I also had some crackers too. Since I canoed into this campsite today, opposed to hiking where you usually have to carry all your equipment in, I was able to bring some extra comforts that I don't typically bring on a hiking trip. Uh, for example, the main one being here, this uh, REI Flexlight chair. They are awesome. But I think they weigh, I think they have lighter weight ones now, but this one is, I think it's a pound and a half or something. And just the size and bulk of it, it's not something that I would ever take on a backpacking trip, personally. More power to you if you do. I mean, it is that comfortable. It might be worth it in some cases. But it's just nice not to be sitting on the ground or on a rock. And to have something to rest your back up against. And the other thing that I brought, which you saw already, is the uh, Trangia stove. It's not a stove that I typically bring just because it's made out of brass and it's, I don't, I don't remember the exact weight, it's four, four ounces or so, maybe more with all the accessories, um, where, whereas my other alcohol stoves weigh less than an ounce, half an ounce even. So I just don't typically take it. But again, since I wasn't carrying it, I brought it along today. I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, Trangia stoves, but quickly here are the different pieces. It is a Swedish military stove. It's where the design, design originated. But a bunch of different brands make them now. Um, well, copies of the Trangia, but you can still get the Trangia uh, model, model stove, which this is. Um, so you've got the uh, stove itself, which if I take these pieces off here. This is the stove and it's got a uh, screw cap with an o-ring in there. So the nice thing is you can actually fill this with fuel. It's got fuel in it now. Put the cap on it and take that. So if you're doing an overnight trip, in theory you could just load up your stove before you left and this is all you would need to take. If it's a, I forget exactly, two or three ounces of fuel in there. Um, and then you've got the simmer ring here, which is basically just a cap that goes right over top and when the stove's running and you can adjust uh, how much heat you want that stove to put out, or how much flame. You also use this. Um, once you finish cooking, the nice thing is you can put out the Trangia. So once my water boiled after lunch, you just take this simmer cap and you just drop it over top of the stove and that'll put out the flame. You can use the lid for that purpose as well, but you have to remember to take the rubber o-ring out, otherwise you'll melt that and then you can't store fuel in it anymore. And then the one other piece 
is the uh, priming tray and this is for in the winter cold weather alcohol doesn't like to light so this has got a piece of wick cotton material some sort of material on the bottom so you uh, fill that with alcohol and light that first and then this clips underneath the trangia and that that flame uh, on this tray will heat up the bottom of the trangia and help that alcohol light so it's just lights it in a couple stages rather than trying to light uh, the entire stove all at once when it's really cold so those are all the pieces like I said it's a few ounces four five ten times more than some of the lighter alcohol stoves out there so I don't normally take it but it is an amazing stove so I brought it this trip and let's go try fishing round two and see if we can have some more luck and uh, I'll film a little bit while I'm out in the canoe Unfortunately, I don't have a good setup <clears throat> in the canoe yet for filming, so it's just kind of tough to handle the paddles, or the paddle, the fishing pole, and the camera. Um, but I do plan on getting some mounts so I can just attach the camera and it'll be in a good position for filming. I won't have to handle the camera as much that way. But for this trip, uh, just figure something out, I guess. Make it work. So I just got my first one. I got them tangled up in the line here. All right. And there he is. He is legal size, but he's not too big. So I think I will put him back and we'll keep fishing for some more. Uh, but he's a real nice fish. As we get later in the day, it's about, it's 2.30 now, I'll be more willing to keep something that's right on the uh, legal catch size. Um, but uh, since that one, it was, you know, 2 o'clock, 1.30, uh, just didn't feel like it was worth keeping all day until dinner time. So I just brought in another one, although he is smaller than the last one. So he is going to be going back as well. I'll show you. It's a nice fish. Another trout. So we will put him back in the water. It is getting later in the day now, and I am going to... Give it about one more hour fishing. I haven't had any luck since those first two trout that I caught a little while ago. And, I mean, ideally, I would catch something over the size limit that I can keep uh, and have for dinner tonight. Um, although, not really a big deal. Super happy to catch those two that I did. Um, but, still would like one for dinner if possible. The nice thing about the trout here is that these are all native trout. Um, New York does stock a lot of the streams and lakes uh, in the Catskills, uh, but this lake is just a native population. Uh, I just got my last trout and I am headed back to camp to process it and uh, get it ready for dinner. Worked out kind of perfectly because I wanted to catch one more for dinner and uh, 
the way this one swallowed the lure, uh, there was no way that I was going to get it out of there and have that trout live. I have just gotten the fire started and uh, just came back to the canoe on the water here to collect the fish. He is on a stringer right now in the water, so I'm going to dispatch him and uh, take him back to camp and clean him up. Dinner is served. Got trout and rice. And then I'll just uh, add some soy sauce. I just cooked the trout uh, in the frying pan just with a lot of butter and then added salt. Once it was done, I took the bones out and the skin off and then I just mix it up in the rice with the soy sauce and eat it like that. Last piece of trout. I have tackled the absolute worst part of any camping trip and that is the dishes but they are done so uh, now just before it gets dark I think I'm gonna go try and find a spot to hang the bear bag tonight it's a lot easier to find one when there's still light out as I typically end up going to find them in the dark So the bear bag is established. Now I've got the string hanging up there. Um, so tonight when I come over here, I just have to clip my food bag on that end and pull it up and secure it. So I've got camp pretty much all well set for the evening. Just gonna use the last few minutes of daylight to get out in the canoe a little bit more. So we'll paddle uh, across to the other side to the entrance of the lake. Spent pretty much the whole day in the canoe, which was nice. Aside from I set up in the morning and I stopped and grabbed lunch. But other than that, I was just in the canoe the whole time. So the canoe that I'm paddling for this trip is a canoe that I just purchased a couple weeks ago. Um, and part of the reason for doing this trip, um, aside from the trout fishing and wanting to come back, um, is definitely just to get out in this new canoe. Previously I had a uh, Old Town Discovery 119, which is this, uh, Old Town's smallest uh, solo canoe. I think it's the only solo canoe they make. Um, and it was a great canoe, but just a little bit heavy and a little wide. It just didn't really move through the water as well as I would like. So I uh, this year I picked up, this is the Winona Wee Lassie, the uh, 12 foot six inch model. And so far I really like it. it weighs half of what the old town weighed. And I, I haven't actually measured it on my scales, but the claimed weight is uh, 24 pounds. The man who built this house and lived here um, was some sort of railroad businessman uh, in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. And he built his vacation home up here. And then I don't really know if this lake existed prior or if he dammed it up and made this lake. But either way, he did a bunch of improvements on the lake and made it suitable habitat for the trout that are still here today. So even though he's long gone, we have him to thank for uh, this awesome lake and for the trout fishing here. It is time that we head back to the campsite. It was an awesome day.
think that's pretty much it for today. It's going to be dark here soon. And then my plan is just to get into the tent and relax. Maybe read for a little while or something. And then uh, go to bed. Good morning. Just getting up here. It's about seven o'clock, <clears throat> and uh, just made oatmeal and some coffee for breakfast. Slept really well last night. I think I woke I woke up once around around three o'clock or so. But other than that, I slept through the night. For the longest time, I resisted getting one of the inflatable air pads when I just used the uh, Thermarest uh, Z-Lite, which is pretty comfortable, but I would wake up a few times every night and have to roll over onto one side or the other just from pressure points, only having that little bit of foam in between you and the ground. And a couple years ago now, I picked up the NeoAir. And now I'll just sleep straight through most nights, maybe wake up once or twice. Um, but it's really comfortable, and I'm glad that I got it. I think my plan for this morning is just to uh, finish eating, get everything packed up and organized. And then I'll probably just paddle around the lake for a little while before I head home. I was debating on whether or not I wanted to fish today. Um, but since I had good luck yesterday and I was able to keep one of them, and then I don't think I'm going to worry about it today. Save those fish for another time. You can see this is everything, pretty much everything that I brought with me for this trip. I've just got some trout magnets, a variety of different uh, hooks, small to medium, some barrel swivels and clips, uh, a couple different floats and sinkers, and then uh, I've got a couple Rapala minnows here which I didn't use this time. Uh, Castmaster, one of my favorites. And then a variety of different colored rooster tails. Those are also kind of my standard go-tos. Usually have a lot of luck with them. Again, I'm not much of, much of a fisherman, but uh, these are the things that I know how to use, so it's generally what I stick to. So that's it in the tackle box. And then for rods and reels, I got two different setups here. Uh, my primary one is this one here. This is a uh, Fluger President 1500, and it is on a uh, St. Croix six foot uh, light power fast action rod. And this is what I caught all of the trout with yesterday. And I had for all three, 
I was using this super duper lure. Um, I haven't used this one too much before, uh, but I had really good luck with it yesterday. That's what they were biting, so that's my primary. And then my secondary rod and reel here is the Shimano Sienna 500 on an Akuma, I think it's a five and a half foot light action uh, rod. I'm not sure, I picked it up on Amazon. So this is kind of my uh, cheaper, lighter setup. This is typically what I'll take uh, backpacking and hiking, just because it's a two piece rod so I can break it down pretty small. It's really light and inexpensive, so if it breaks or anything happens to it, it doesn't really matter. And on there I've got just a different rooster tail. That's it. That's all I was using. I like to keep it pretty simple. Um, and Don't get too crazy with different lures and baits. Alright, well I am all packed up. That's it for this campsite. I've got the uh, canoe and all the equipment down by the water already. So I'm going to head down there and uh, hop in the canoe. And we will uh, paddle around for a little bit before we head out. We are almost back to the starting point here. The put in is right next to the dam. Really anywhere on that grassy bank you see there in front of you. And that's it. I am back to the put in. Get a good look here at the canoe. So I'm going to pull this all out of the water and start uh, walking it all back to the truck. All right, well that is it for this trip. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.